Hi everyone, it's Andrew here. I just thought I'd make this video because I've had to recently overhaul the bonnet lock on my golf again. Now, uh, what, there's a couple of key points I want to highlight. I've actually written a guide for this on my website, but it's a bit vague compared to my original article, so I just thought I'd go into some more detail on these. Now, the bonnet locks themselves are connected via a cable to a lock and release lever here. So, what happens is when you pull on the cable, it lifts this lever. This lever, when lifted, then releases a lock inside here, which unclips off the main bonnet lock on this point. Now, what, hap what happens generally when the bonnet lock is seized is when you're bouncing it down, mine wasn't going all the, all the way. It was literally just coming back up like that when I was trying to release it. So the bonnet lock itself was seized, and I actually had to buy a new one for my car. Who? There we go. I had to buy a new one for my car anyway because the alarm connector, which is here, if we can get in the picture, you notice on the bottom of these, the alarm connector here, the wires have snapped off completely, so I had to get a new one anyway. Now, the main point of concern, what I want to highlight when overhauling the bonnet lock, is you need to primarily focus on this point here where the lever is, because this is what caused what the problems of mine. These springs, the word, these other springs here were dirty, but this was the one what was sticking. in basically, when you lift this lever, it should snap back in the place, and this one's not. It's actually going down really slowly, so it was quite sticky. Uh, where I tend to find the problem where it was gummed up was inside this point here, and also when you lift up the lock, there's also another point which is at the front here basically the best thing to do when you're re-greasing the lock is just to get in every nut and cranny now the first thing I did before I actually worked on the lock was I used an entire tin, why not an entire tin, well half a tin of brake cleaner and literally just sprayed everywhere inside this entire lock to get rid of all the old grease you shouldn't really use WD-40 or copper because it can collect dust and made outward whereas like lithium grease is what I use and it's a lot better in general generally regarded, generally regarded as the best one to use now, what I do is I sprayed it inside here and I made sure I got the screwdriver in every nut and cranny, separated these springs, and also there's a spring at the bottom end of the lock, which you may not be able to see in this video. No, you can't, but there was a spring. They've actually changed the design of this lock as well, I've just noticed on the old one. But there was a spring at the bottom of this lock. On the, on the original lock that's here, it's actually down here on the new one. But what I did is I literally lifted the spring and then sprayed under here so all these all these compartments and spring connectors were all shiny clean they had no grease in them and then what I did is I primarily applied grease down this joint here and on this joint here and then I literally just put some inside the connector housing where it clips and inside where the bonnet lock re-greases and goes down and then when I was testing it I made sure that every time I snapped back down because at the moment this is a bit sticky but it should literally, as soon as you release it, it should, score, it should go straight back down and snap into place. This was causing the problem. Now something to note, when you reassemble the lock after it's been repaired, there are three holes in the lock itself. There's this one and this one. These are the two for the bonnet. And there's this one over here. Now, these locks are the two longest screws. The bigger holes are the longest ones. And the locks themselves... If I remember right, there are T27 screws, so you'll have a long T27, a long T27, and then a shorter T27 here. But the main point of problem, what you'll probably get when you're assembling the lock, is there's a little plastic guide what fits holding the wire along this point here. It connects into the two, it connects into the two notches, so you have a notch here and a notch here. What it does the little plastic guide runs along here and connects into the cable housing and then it slots into place and that's what gives you the tension but I tend to find when I first repaired my lock that this was always coming out and it was really annoying us. So what I ended up doing which you may find it easier is I wrapped insulation tape around the wire held inside the plastic housing before I clipped it back into place. I wrapped a bit of wire around I think it was around this point and this point and it was literally just to hold the wire in place. Once you've got that point on, if you reassemble the lock by reconnecting the back the tensioner, because when the tensioner is released, it makes it easy for you 
easy for it to move without any problems of the lock loose and connectivity and then once you've put it back into place open the tensioner reconnect it leave your bonnet grill off for the moment test your bonnet that opens up and if it does the job is good and if it doesn't one thing you probably want to quickly check is to make sure that the plastic housing hasn't come off here if it hasn't then that's just looking at the tensioner because the first time I refitted this uh, on the other one I actually made the same mistake as inside the tensioner there's a there's a spring with a little bit at the end and then there's a sort of gap at the end of it and I thought the connector only goes in there but the bit what has the spring and the little bit on the end if you turn it around there's actually a little hole inside there where it clips into and that's what gives it the tension that it's only a difference of not even the end of your finger there but in terms of connectivity it gives it all the tension you need when you clip it back in place and then the only other things you've got to do is make sure your, your alarm connector is connected clipped in and make sure it's firmly in the slot which is roughly behind the radiator and near the headlight there's, there's a little circular housing for it now obviously if the bonnet isn't all the way down the, the one thing to note is the windscreen wipers won't work on your car so if your windscreen wipers stop working or the alarm doesn't activate it's probably a problem with the bonnet lock so that's something to take note for future use so I'm going to post an post this video up and I'm going to link to a couple of the website articles. The first one will be when I re replace the bonnet lock and the second one's going to be when I overhauled it just with different pictures. Obviously if there's any further questions, if you comment and I'll reply back as quick as possible. And thanks for watching.